Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another episode of the Cat Skull Academy, the series that aims to teach you everything you need to know to get the best start possible in EVE Echoes. In today's lesson, we're going to be asking the question, which ship is best for you early on in the game as a new budding combat pilot? Now, in EVE Echoes, there is no conclusive answer to the question of which is the best ship. If you've ever asked the question, hey, which ship is best in this game, and someone has just given a direct answer, they're lying, or they're biased, or they're making assumptions. The simple fact is that whichever ship is best for you is dependent on a lot of different variables. What do you want to do with the ship? What kind of skills do you have in the game? What kind of playstyle are you looking to enjoy? All of this and more are going to ultimately dictate which ship is best for you, and so that's what we're going to go through in today's video. Now, as usual, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting like on it. And if you are after more content like this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you never miss an update. And if you're looking for more lessons and more information about how to get started in EVE Echoes, make sure to check out the Cat Skull Academy playlist. It's linked in the description below. It'll have a link at the end of this video. And of course, you can find out more by heading to my YouTube channel page directly. Finally, if you do want to support this channel and go the extra mile to keep me doing what I do, you can head across to my Patreon store and my Redbubble merchandise store. All that said and done though, let's jump right into talking about which ship is best for you as a new combat pilot. When someone asks me, hey Benzi, which ship is going to be best for me to use? The first question I have to ask them right back is, what kind of content are you looking to do with it? Now, in this case, for this video, we've actually already answered this question. We're looking at the best ship for newer combat players to aim for. So this is something that basically early on in the game, you're going to be running things like news encounters, or if you're part of one of the Nullsec alliances early on, you might be running lower tech Nullsec cosmic anomalies. Anomalies, anything that is PvE, basically shooting ships that are not controlled by other players. And there are some definitely better options for this than some of the others, and that's what we're going to go into. Now, the ship that you're going to start with ultimately depends on which of the four races you chose at the early stages of the game during character creation. At the end of the tutorial, you will have a destroyer that has been given to you by the particular race that you chose. So for example, if you chose the Amar Empire, you will have a Coercer destroyer. If you chose the Minmatar Republic, you'll have a Thrasher destroyer. And if you chose the Galente Federation, you'll have a Catalyst destroyer. And if you chose the Kaldari State, you will have a Cormorant Destroyer. Now, I've already done videos on all four of those ships, so if you want to be using those to start off with, do check out those videos, type into YouTube, Captain Benzie, and then whichever of the four destroyers you happen to have. Early on in the game as well, you will be given a box that contains a trainer destroyer. This could be the Talwar, uh, Talwar trainer, the Korax trainer, the Algos trainer, or the Dragoon trainer. Now, I don't necessarily recommend skilling into any one of these. They can be interesting, and because they only use destroyer level skills and small weapon skills, you can train into those as you see fit, but ultimately, for the most part, you'll probably get away just fine with your Coercer, Catalyst, Cormorant, or Thrasher, whichever of those four you have. Have. Once you hit tech level 5, however, you have a few more options open to you. Now I'm going to jump out of the ship tree for a moment here, and we're going to open up the shipboard AI. Hopefully, you have been working on the road to set sail. These tutorials um, uh, can be done, you earn a new list of these tutorials every day up until the end of your first week. You can complete these at any pace you like, but once you have completed all seven days, in addition to the rewards that they give you in the top right of each of the uh, menus here, here themselves, they also will reward a ship safe. Now this ship safe contains your choice of one of these four trainers, the Omen Trainer, the Caracal Trainer, the Vexa Trainer, and the Stabber Trainer. Now not all of these are made equal, and we'll talk about more of these in just a moment. So remember, you're going to have this ship safe which will give you a free trainer cruiser at tech level 5. Now, during your daily login rewards as well, in your first month, you will also receive numerous crates that give you new weapon skills. These are all medium skills. You can open the crate and you'll have your choice of either medium laser skills, medium laser operation, medium missile operation, medium railgun operation, and medium cannon operation. 
Now, at first appearance, these might twin up quite nicely with this ship safe. After all, medium laser operation works really well with the Omen Trainer. Medium missiles works really well with the Caracal Trainer, and medium cannons works really well with the Stabber Trainer. But what about medium railguns? Well, unfortunately, the Vexa Trainer is a medium drone ship, so it does not really get much effect from medium railguns. Of course, you can put railguns on the Vexa, but it's not really going to help you all that much. That means of the three trainer ships here, if you combine those with the skill ships you're going to be getting, then the Omen, the Caracal, and the Stabber are going to be your best options because you can get straight to medium laser operation four and have an Omen trainer. You can go straight for the Caracal Trainer and have level 4 of medium missile operation. And you can go for the Stabber Trainer and have level 4 of medium cannon operation. However, again, there is a sort of better or worse option for this, as we'll now discuss. We're going to go back into the ship trees here. Now, if we go straight off into the Amar ship tree first of all, at tech level 5, we have that Omen trainer that we've just discussed, and you can see it gets bonuses from medium laser operation and cruiser command. First of all, medium laser operation you're going to earn through the, that skill chip. You can just use the skill chip to get medium laser operation all the way to level 4, then you just have to train the level 5. Cruiser Command, again, there is a skill chip that will help you train that early on in the game. So these are nice and easy to get, right? And once you have finished tech level 5 and you are onto tech level 6, there are some options open to you. So at tech level 6, we then have the Omen Navy issue. This is the big brother to the Omen. There's the Omen Trainer, the Omen, and then the Omen Navy issue. This is actually a surprisingly powerful ship. The downside though for a newer player is that it is advanced medium laser operation and advanced cruiser command. Now, if you are an alpha level pilot, if you do not have Omega on your account, you cannot train advanced skills. And if you are an Omega pilot and you let your Omega lapse and you go back to being an alpha, you don't have access to those skills. They don't go away, which means when you get your Omega back, you will get the skills back. But for the time that you are not an Omega, when you are back to being an alpha, the Omen Navy issue is not a great ship because you're not getting any of the bonuses from it. Now, there is another option at tech level 6. This is the Mala. Now, the Mala is also a medium laser cruiser. This uses the medium laser skills. It's going to help, you know, the, the medium laser skills are going to increase the laser damage on this ship, but the ship itself only gets bonuses from armor operation and cruiser command. And you'll notice that both of those are basic level skills that are trainable by an alpha pilot. This means that if you were to go for the Omen Trainer early on and train into medium laser operation, then the Mala makes a really nice option for you to upgrade to once you hit tech level 6. It's also an incredibly tanky ship that can do a lot of damage, and we have covered this elsewhere on the channel as well, so I do recommend checking that out if this is a ship that you're interested in. So going for medium lasers and choosing the, uh, uh, the Omen Trainer seems to be a really good solid option, right? Good. Let's have a look at the Minmata Republic. What if you went medium cannons and you chose the Stabber Trainer? Well, the Stabber Trainer, as we can see here, gets bonuses to medium cannon operation, which you would have at four, and Cruiser Command, again, which you would have at four at this point, and you can just train those up to get the most out of the Stabber Trainer hull. Once you've enjoyed this, you might decide that you upgrade to the Stabber, and then when you hit tech level 6, you might decide to go for the Stabber Fleet issue. But just like the Omen Navy issue, we have that same problem. Advanced medium cannon operation, advanced cruiser command. This means if you are an alpha pilot, this ship is not a good option for you. But is there an option like the Mala that's one of the heavy cruisers? Yes, there is. This is the Rupture. The Rupture is actually one of my favorite looking ships in the game as well, which does really help it out. But this is a ship that uses medium cannons, so it's going to get bonuses. You know, you're going to be improving it thanks to having the medium cannon operation skill trained, and it gets its bonuses to the ship from shield operation and cruiser command, both basic level. These heavy cruisers that we're showcasing here are ultimately the highest tech level ships in the game that only use basic skills. These are pretty much designed for alpha pilots like yourself getting started in combat. 
The rupture is fairly fast, the auto cannons that it fires are pretty damaging, and it is pretty tanky as well. The Mala and the Rupture are both fantastic options for a tech level 6 alpha pilot. If you're not sure if you want to commit to spending money on this game and buying Omega, then the Mala and Rupture are both excellent options. Let's have a look at the Caldari State, because we said the Glente Federation, their Vexa, was not a great option to start with, but the Caldari State, at least, we had the Caracal Trainer. And remember, there is medium missile operation as part of those skill chips, so you could train medium missile operation and fly the Caracal, right? It works, it uses medium missile operation and cruiser command, and it's a pretty solid ship. Once we hit tech level 6 though, it is then the Caracal Navy issue, which again, same problem we had before, advanced medium torpedo and missile operation, and advanced cruiser command, so it's advanced level skills, not helpful for an alpha level pilot. But what about their heavy cruiser? Well, the heavy cruiser for the Caldari is the MOA. Now, if we have a look down the list here, you'll see that this gets bonuses for rail guns, which means those missile skills you trained for the Caracal just really aren't useful anymore. The MOA is a fantastic ship, and medium railgun operation is one of the skill ships that you will have available, so once you hit tech level 6, you might decide to use a medium railgun skill chip to train that skill up and get yourself into the MOA nice and early. Again, this is an alpha-friendly ship, it can do a lot of damage with medium snub-nosed railguns, and thanks to its bonuses from shield operation there, it is an incredibly tanky and survivable ship. It's just a bit of a rough ride because you've probably chosen the Caracal and missiles before this. There are no railgun ships at tech level 5 is what I'm trying to say, so you kind of have to use that railgun skill chip in order to get this one, and it's only at tech level 6 that you'll really get hold of it. Finally then, for the Glente Federation, remember your trainer ship here is the Vexa Trainer, and this gets bonuses from medium drone operation, which sadly is not one of the skill chips, so I don't recommend choosing the Vexa Trainer as an alpha pilot, because you're going to have to invest a lot more of your skill points into getting this thing up and running. It's an excellent ship, it just takes a lot more investment to get it off the ground. And once you hit tech level 6, again, the Vexa Navy issue has the same issue as the other Navy and Fleet issue ships in that it uses advanced skills, which is not helpful to an alpha pilot, and the other Tech 6 ship, the heavy cruiser for the Glente, is the Thorax, which again, like the MOA, uses medium railguns. That means that if you've trained the medium railgun skill, you do have the option between the MOA and the Thorax, depending on if you prefer armor operation or uh, shield operation, depending between the Thorax with armor and the MOA with shield but ultimately, you still have to train a second weapon system. It means for the skill ships and the trainer ships, you've essentially got the options of going with um, a trainer and a skill that matches it, would be the Kaldari State uh, Caracal Trainer, the Amar Empire Omen Trainer, or the Midmatar Republic's uh, Stabber Trainer. Those then do translate for the Amar Empire and the Midmatar Republic at least, into their Tech 6 heavy cruiser equivalent of the Mala and the Rupture. But if you went for the Vexa or the Caracal as your trainer, and then chose a one of the skill chips based on that, you're going to need to train into medium rail guns by the time you hit tech level 6 to go for the MOA or the, uh, or the Thorax. Now admittedly, if you have chosen, say, the Vexa Trainer or the Caracal Trainer and you've gone for the medium missiles, you do get multiple of these skill chips, so there's nothing to stop you then training into one of the other systems. You could train the Caracal and the Caracal Trainer with medium missiles and then jump into the Rupture and use one of the uh, weapon, skill, uh, weapon skill chips to train into medium cannon operation. The thing I would say though is that those weapon skills, if you use say the medium cannon one and you then are flying the stabber trainer looking to move into the rupture, when you get the other weapon chips you can actually use them again and because you've got the skill already trained it just gives you the raw skill points which you can then put into other skills like getting the uh, cannon operation to level 5 for example, or upping shield operation, or upping cruiser command, or you can spend them wherever you wish. 
So if you decided that you wanted to go for the Stabber Trainer, follow it by the Mower, then all of those skill chips you can just keep choosing the Medium Cannon Operation, and that will give you more skills to play around with, allowing you to skill into the Rupture and all related skills much, much faster. And the same is true for the Mala, because you'll be using the Omen Trainer at tech level 5 and moving into the Mala at tech level 6. They have a direct upgrade path, which unfortunately the Vexa and the Caracal do not. Not. They then move into the Moa and the Thorax, both amazing ships, but they do require a bit more skill point investment. Ultimately, that's why at the beginning of this video you can see that here I have the Mala. This character started off by using the Omen Trainer um, and then upgraded into the Mala here, and this will clear easily any Tech 6 and Tech 7 encounters that I get as part of my news encounters, and it does a lot of damage, it's very cheap to fit, it's not the cheapest ship early on, but it will see you for a long way, and one of the things I have covered recently on the channel outside of the, Ca uh, the Cat Skull Academy is how these particular cruisers, these heavy cruisers, can actually clear content all the way up to Tech level 10 if you invest the skills in them. So if you really like the Moa, or you really like the Rupture, or the Thorax, or the Mala, or the... I've missed one there, <laughs> whichever one I've missed. Ultimately, if you enjoy these ships, they will see you all the way through to tech level 10. And as you go up the tech levels, you'll also get some variety with these hulls as well. The Mala, the Moa, the Mauler, the, the Mala, the Moa, the Th Thorax, and the Rupture, sorry, all have their basic hulls. Then they have Guardian hulls, which are designed to protect the fleet. And they have an Interdictor hull at tech level 10, which is big for PvP and hull holding enemy ships in place while you and your fleet rip them apart, so there are options there as well. This means that if you are a new combat pilot, these are the four ships that I would recommend aiming for. Pick one that you like the look of, it would be the way I suggest. They play very similarly. All four of these ships are designed around brawling, getting up close and personal to your target, and using beam lasers, snub-nosed railguns, or auto cannons at short range in order to rip your opponent apart. If you do have a preference between shield tanking or armor tanking, then of course the shield tanking options are the Rupture and the Moa, whereas armor is the Mala and the Thorax, and that should give you an idea of what you should be aiming for. Now again, if you have already chosen one of the trainers and you're thinking, oh actually I wish I could swap that, don't worry, those skill chips will allow you to train out of these things, train those new skills once you hit tech level 6. So if you have chosen something else, don't worry, it's not a train smash. One of the big advantages of EVE is that you can always train new skills. You don't ever run out of skill points, you just have to wait a while whilst you learn the new skills relevant to flying your new ship. So if you've accidentally chosen, say, the Vexa, and you think, oh, actually the mower looks really cool or the rupture looks really cool you can use those skill chips or if you've already used them just wait a bit of time train the relevant skills and jump into those later on it's just about the ideal route that you can take to get into these ships nice and quickly Anyway, folks, that's about everything I wanted to say in regards to these four ships. If you are looking to get started as a combat pilot in EVE Echoes, I wholeheartedly recommend aiming for one of the four heavy cruisers. These are excellent options. They'll see you going for a long time, um, and you can you fly these as an alpha pilot as well. They do not require Omega to work effectively, so there's, that is an amazing advantage to them. Let me know what your favorite ship is, though. Which, uh, which of the destroyers did you have when coming out of the tutorial which ships did you then choose for like your uh, your trainer ship and what did you fly after that because some people do stick with destroyers for a high level other people move out of combat and go into things like mining so on and so forth and there are of course better ships depending on those uses as well and if you go omega well you might decide that the Malor isn't your thing, but the Omen Navy issue is, and if you don't like the Rupture and you're Omega, you could go into the Stabber Fleet issue, so on and so forth. There are options if you do decide to go Omega, and I'd love to hear what you guys have been up to in regards to that. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching this right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!